Ryan Howard, Raul Ibanez, Jay Sutley, and Jason Worth. The offensive lineup of the Phillies provides the power night after night in dominating fashion. They possess the natural power that can turn a game around with one swing. Their power has come in many different ways this season, while the frequency of their swings before the break is among the best in baseball history. The flair for the dramatic is nothing these Cubs haven't experienced, providing the punch many times for the local faithful. The power of the big blow is always impressive from the moment it leaves the pitcher's hand until the necessary connection. It's about the strength, the impact, and the distance traveled. But sometimes it's just a matter of where the ball lands. And in the end, it's the Phillies circling the bases again for another home run. And like the long ball and if you like the home runs well you like what the Phillies have done on this homestand so far they've taken six of the first seven ball games and tonight they begin a three game series against the Pittsburgh Pirates hi everybody I'm Tom McCarthy along with Gary Matthews Chris Wheeler will be along in just a little bit well there's no doubt Sarge that the Phillies have been connecting and connecting at a high velocity of home runs over the last handful of days in fact on this homestand alone they have 12 homers and Jason Worth who was named to the all-star team today he has hit a home run in four consecutive games and these sold out crowds they've enjoyed it yeah well he's hitting those balls straight away center field in the right field he has been staying on the ball the reason Jason has been hitting the ball out of the ballpark look at the graphic right there here's the guys with the 20 home runs or more Abanez leading the way and he hasn't even played in such a long time almost forgetting about him clutch hitting chase up you see his numbers there and the last team to have done that was the Toronto Blue Jays there Tom Sunday's ball game well right away J. Rowe leading it off as he goes deep against those Mets chase up in the sixth inning he goes deep again against those Mets and that's what you like to see and then on Monday the Phillies continue the long ball threat they scored 10 runs in the first inning against the Reds it was capped off by a three run home run by Chase Sutley the third home run of the inning and then later on the game was capped off by Jason Wirtz opposite field grand slam the second grand slam for Worth in a Phillies uniform yeah how about there on Wednesday there there's Mr. Jason Wirtz jumping in the Cadillac again as he goes deep in the deepest part of the alleys there last night there there goes Chase Utley he's just been hitting the ball all over the ballpark as he has an inside the park home run that's kind of rare these days clutch hitting Jason where it goes down fastball we talked about him hitting the ball straight away center field slowing it down there to Cadillac as he goes across the plate who knows that might have got him into that all-star game when you take a look at the numbers here 119 home runs as they lead the National League. They're just starting to really click. One thing that kind of concerns you, though, 42% of their home runs, or runs, I should say, have come on home runs. Yeah, they've talked about the success of this team, that they would like to play a little bit more small ball, and it's because of the percentage of home runs that they've hit this year. Maybe they can't count on it the rest of the season, but it's been a whole lot of fun to watch so far this year. Tonight, it'll be Zach Duke on the mound for the Pirates, and he'll be opposed by right-hander Joe Blanton. Well, Chase Sutley has certainly hit the long ball this year, but he's also played some great defense. More chances than any second baseman in Major League Baseball. We'll see what he does with the leather tonight.
and then subsequently claimed by the Houston Astros. So Chris Coast is no longer with the Phillies. That means that Paul Bacco is the backup catcher to Carlos Ruiz, who you also saw on the bench. And Carlos is battling some neck stiffness, and he said he's okay. It's been bugging him for about three days, and he thinks he'll be fine sometime in the next day or so. So the Phillies are working with two catchers going into this series. Here's the Pirates lineup leading it off in center field. Andrew McCutcheon, Freddie Sanchez, the second baseman, bat second. Garrett Jones is in left field hitting third, followed by Ryan Domit, the catcher, batting cleanup. Adam LaRoche, the first baseman, hits fifth. Andy LaRoche's brothers over at third base, batting sixth. Brandon Moss is in right field hitting seventh. Jack Wilson, the shortstop, bats eighth. And batting ninth at pitching is left-hander Zach Duke. And on the mound for the Phillies is right-hander Joe Blanton, who is coming off a well of a start his last time here in this ballpark. Yeah, he really pitched well, Tom, against the Mets on Sunday. In fact, they didn't give him anything. Phillies won that game two to nothing, complete the three-game sweep of the New York Mets. There are the numbers on Joe. He's pitched well lately. Scouting report on it from Southwest Airlines since May the 26th, three and one record. So no decisions in there, and a real good earned run average, 2.61. He's another guy who really needs to spot his fastball. And the better he does that, the rest of his stuff looks pretty good. It is time now for our Key State Chrysler Jeep Keys to tonight's game as the Pirates move into town while Raul Ibanez is back. Tom just talked about that. He's not in the lineup against the lefty Duke tonight. Pirates, they're a really good defensive team. They don't make many errors, and their pitchers don't throw a whole lot of home run balls. Well, this guy could fly to Andrew McCutcheon, who leads things off for the Pirates. He's their new center fielder, although I guess he's not new anymore. This is his 34th consecutive start. And they traded Nate McLeod to the Atlanta Braves to give him the everyday job at center field. We've seen this guy in spring training the last couple of years, and you can see he has tremendous talent. And he's down to the count, one ball and two strikes. Well, he's a tools player, great athlete. Last year in AAA, he hit 283 with nine home runs, but he also stole 34 bases. Well, they just turned the center field job over to him. Morgan was in that deal going over to um, to Washington. So uh, you know they said OK let's go with Andrew McCutcheon. He's our future. And it's two balls and two strikes to him. But the Pirates have made a number of different moves over the last month and a half or so including that deal to sit Niger Morgan to the Nationals for Joel Hanrahan and for Lastings Millage. And a breaking ball swung out and missed to Joe Blanton has his first strikeout of the night. And it's the first out of the ball game. And that's a pretty good hook right there by Joe. He got him way out in front of it. And there you see he swings over. Eventually he throws curveball and slider. And you know, Joe will go out there during the course of a game, try and get a feel if one's better than the other. Sometimes they're both working, and then he's really good. And then he'll use his changeup effectively to left-handed hitters. That'll bring Freddie Sanchez to the plate. He'll be at St. Louis next Tuesday for the All-Star game. Guy, yeah, excuse me, Tom. This guy's a former batting champion. He's a good hitter. Hits a ball the other way a lot. There's been a lot of talk that he could be the next pirate to go in potential trades over the next couple of weeks. Overall, you saw he's hitting 316 with six home runs and 33 RBIs. And when he heads to St. Louis this week, it'll be his third All Star game. And he's down on strikes, back to back strikeouts, different routes for Joe Blanton. That was a high fastball. And they're two away. And Joe be the first to tell you he's not really a strikeout pitcher, though every once in a while he'll have a good strikeout game. Uh, but he was down in the strike zone and then up. <laughs> Boy, that was a wild swing. That wasn't even close to a strike. Freddie Sanchez usually has better plate covers than that. Yeah. Here's Garrett Jones, a 290 hitter, riding a five game hitting streak. Another one of the youngsters that the Pirates have in their lineup. And he hits it in the air to straightaway center field. Victorino's going back, and all he's going to do is watch this one go oh. over the brick wall in center field. Holy cow. Man. And the Pirates lead it one to nothing. Ryan Howard's going over that a couple of times. I'm trying to think of a visiting player has done that I, right now. I just can't think of one. You knew it was a home run off the bat, but was it going to go to Ashburn? Well, the wind is blowing out. Just looking at the flags right now. There's Ryan Howard. He's thinking, I, I've done that a few times. That's a fastball down the middle. 
Oh, there it goes, bouncing up against the back wall. Ooh, that was a long one. Well, it did seem that it was going to go into at least the bullpen. Oh, off yeah. Off the bat. But, man, that thing carried unbelievable. Well, if you look at the flags, you know, the flags are blowing out towards center field a little bit tonight. So, uh, keep the ball down, huh? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> well, the Pirates lead it 1 0 here in the top of the first. That's the third home run of the year for Jones, who had 12 home runs at AAA before his promotion. Well, that was something. Strikeout, strikeout, and the first pitch take measure shot. There it is again. Look at that thing. That's one of those majestic home runs. And right on to Ashburn Alley and then up there against the back wall in the alley. A lot of people were just stunned that a ball would come their way during the game, let alone batting practice. Land off the mound, has time, throws off his heels, and he's able to get Domit, and the inning is over. But the Pirates with a long home run from Garrett Jones. Well, they take a 1 0 lead as we go to the bottom of the first. Earlier today, he's in right field batting fifth. Pedro Feliz, the third baseman, hits sixth. John Mayberry's in left field batting seventh. Paul Bacco catches tonight, hits eighth. And batting ninth, of course, of pitching is Joe Blent. And they will face left hander Zach Duke, who's been arguably the Pirates' best pitcher this year. Oh, this guy can crank up a good ball game. He has good stuff there, are the numbers on him. You know, that's a really good earned run average in 17 starts. Um, almost a hit for innings pitch. Walk strikeout ratio is okay. Here's our scouting report on it from Southwest Airlines. Fastball is a sinking, tailing type of fastball. Slider's kind of a slurve. It'll also throw an effective change up to right hand hitters. And the guy's a decent hitter himself. Well, he'll go to work against Jimmy Rollins, who leads things off. J Roll hitting 227 with seven homers and 34 RBIs. Jimmy, during the month of July, is hitting 400. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contest contestant is Bob Ignis from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If the Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game, then Bob can win $100. Introducing the cafe coffees at McDonald's, a new line of lattes, mochas, and cappuccinos. Jimmy chops it toward third. And Andy LaRoche throws it across the diamond to his brother Adam, and there's one out. Wheels has mentioned the, the Pirates play very good defense, and Adam LaRoche is one of the big reasons why he has just one error over at first base. And John Russell is in his second season as the Pirates manager. If he and the organization have done one thing really well, it's that they have formed a very good infield defense. In fact, these guys are second only to the Phillies in fielding percentage this year. They have a lot of outfield assists, too. So, you know, they're, they're a team that does not beat themselves that way. Their pitching has been hot and cold all year and their offense, you know, other than LaRoche at first base, I mean, they really don't have much pop in their offense. Although Garrett Jones hit one 
kind of good. Yeah, you wouldn't know it after watching no. the first inning. <laughs> He's a guy who used to be in the Minnesota organization. Yeah, the Pirates have not made an error in 64 games, 64 haven't, straight games. Right, haven't thrown a home run ball for a long time. No. Ports on him. He's going to throw. A Duke, Duke will throw a lot of change ups to the right-handed hitters. Andy Fletcher's the home plate umpire tonight. Greg Gibson's over at first. Ted Barrett's at second, and the crew chief Tim McClellan is over at third base. And it's two and two to Victorino. Shane is second in the league in hits with 104. He's second in runs scored with 61, trailing only Albert Pujols. And he lines that one down the left field line. It's hooking toward the corner. It's a fair ball, and it kicks off the wall. Victorino's going to stop at second base. He has a one-out double, his 23rd double of the season. And the Phillies, who lead the National League in extra base hits, get one right off the bat here in the first inning. Kind of off-speed pitch, too, to Shane Victorino. It sat up there in the strike zone, kind of nice. You know, breaking ball or chain. That looks like a breaking ball grip, and it was. That's that slurve uh, that he throws, kind of an in-between curve and slider, and that was just barely fair. So shades in scoring position for Chase Utley. Chase is fifth in the league at RBIs with 61, and overall hitting 307. Out one ball and no strikes to him. 292 left handed hitters against Duke. So, you know, what that could probably mean is he doesn't use his change up much to them because some left handers do not like to throw change up to left handed hitters. So you're taking away a very effective pitch for the guy. And it, not that anybody's taking it away from him, he's just not comfortable with it. I'm sure Joe Kerrigan would like him to throw it if he could use it effectively. Well, the Phillies pitching coach is the Pirates pitching coach. Victorino's going and Duke's got him picked off. So Shane was trying to read the move of Duke who hung his leg and then spun back. And Victorino who was already in scoring position. Was trying to get over to third with less than two outs and that was costly. Yeah well this guy has an inside move and it was on the reports and. He got him anyway that's what's called an inside move right there and they will put that on the scouting reports a lot of times so that. If guys are thinking about stealing third, understand that he has that in his repertoire. Now the count one ball and one strike to Chase Utley. There's Joe Kerrigan, former Phillies pitching coach. Joe was on television today on Comcast Sportsnet talking about Pedro Martinez. <laughs> yeah, he had an experience with Pedro Martinez. Yeah, he did up in Boston. Phillies, according to uh, some reports, uh, a chance to see Pedro pitch again today down in the Dominican Republic. One and two, the count to Chase Utley. One of those teams that does not overshift Chase Utley. You know, you see most of them do it now, but they are leaving the shortstop in a normal position. In a pull position right there against a left handed pitcher. Utley checks the swing. They appeal no swing to, says Tim McClellan, the third base umpire. By the way, Scott Profrock, who's Philly's assistant GM, will join us later on in this telecast. We'll ask him about uh, Pedro Martinez. Also, ask him about the moves today with. Chris Coast being put on waivers claimed by the Houston Astros. Oh, Ibanez back on the roster, not playing today. That's going to find the seats behind old plate. And the count remains full, three and two to Chase. Phillies begin play tonight, two games up in the National League East over the Florida Marlins. And I think everybody who was watching games last night thought the Phillies would be three up because the Marlins were trailing the the Diamondbacks seven to nothing in the sixth inning and came back and won that game. Listen to that on the way home and uh, 
You're getting a bad feeling from it. Ball four and chases a board with a two out walk. Hey, hey, Phillies fans, during tonight's Phillies game, don't just watch, play along live online with Michael Barkan and Ricky Vitalico at CSNPhilly.com. Make predictions, answer trivia, chat with friends, and earn points to win great prizes. Play Friday Night Fever right now by logging on to CSNPhilly.com. Keyword fever. With two outs and chase at first, Ryan Howard is the batter. Ryan was over at first base watching Garrett Jones's long home run over the batter's eye in center field, which he has done a handful of times in his career here at this ballpark. And he had a somewhat of a of a smirk on his face because he knows what it's like to hit a ball out there. Wheels and I, was, Wheels and I were saying it. We don't remember anybody hitting one over that batter's eye from the opposition. Remember anybody going over that? Just Ryan Howard so far. I don't know if they have that in the media guide or now. I have to check. Remember, uh, been a couple long ones for right-handed hitters. Manny Ramirez hit one out there where now it says Jefferson University Hospital. There's Garrett Jones, and then uh, Mike Piazza went out there on uh, Ashburn yep. Alley to the left of the brick wall. A lot of those Nationals guys that one night were hitting balls everywhere. Deep here, Ryan Zimmerman. Hold down the right field line. That's a foul ball. And Ryan just got out in front of it. It's two and one. So Chase, who was between second and third when that ball hopped into the crowd, will go back to first. Kind of surprising to see those numbers there, Ryan. In 24 games, hitting just a buck 23 against the Buckos. The one homer, and that, what he hit it last year, fine. I think it was last he year. Gone all that time, uh, and he'd been up in the major leagues for a while. Had not homered against the Pirates, and he had hit a ton of them in the home run hitting contest in that ballpark a few years ago. In fact, he hit them into the water out there. Well, here he's worked the count in his favor, three and one. He sees Duke does not throw changeups to left handed hitters and throws breaking balls and fastballs. There's that breaking ball. Ball four. The Phillies have runners on first and second. Back to back walks issued by Duke. He hadn't walked too many coming into this ball game. Just 29 and 118 innings. And now he's walked two. Here in the bottom of the first and the man of the hour Jason Worth was named to his first all star game today. Well he's had a heck of a run and his numbers and stats are really good right now. Plus he's played so well and Charlie Manuel just picked him. Uh, and Charlie said he deserves it and he's my guy. And he said and I'm the manager. <laughs> so it all kind of worked out. And he's really happy to be able to take all three of his outfielders. All three of his outfielders. It's the first time since 1972 that a National League team has all three of its outfielders going to the All Star game. And that was the Pittsburgh Pirates, who that year had Roberto Clemente, Al Oliver, and Willie Stargell go to the All Star game. Not bad. Not bad at all. You remember back in those days, the Pirates were pretty good. Well, how about those three names you just rattled off? And with that, it's time now for our Geico quote of the day. Charlie on Jason's All Star selection. His stats are definitely up there with the other guys. He's been swinging the bat really good lately. He plays a good right field, has a strong arm. He's a talented kid. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 800 947 Auto. 1 0 the count to Worth. And it's 2 0. The last last time was excuse me uh, a major league team had three of its outfielders its starting outfielders go to an all star game was back in ninety five when the Indians had Manny Ramirez Albert Bell and Kenny Lofton go to the all star game well, Charlie was around that bunch. Yep. He was asked today to compare. This trio with that trio <laughs> and he started laughing and he said well this one's this one. Has better speed. This group has better speed. <laughs> yeah, it's a bobber. It sure did. Oh boy. In the air to right center field. It's playable for Damian Moss. And the inning is over. So the Phils get a few base runners. They strand two 
We've completed one. We go to the second. It's one nothing Buckos. You can always catch the game on your computer with MLB.TV, the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 out-of-market games per week live on your computer. And catch those you missed on demand. For more details, visit phillies.com where baseball is always on. Adam LaRoche is swinging at the first pitch. Down the left field line, John Mayberry makes the call. And thankfully he was there because I'm not sure if Pedro Feliz would have been able to catch that ball. No, and it looked like a collision was coming too with Big John coming down there. Uh, Jimmy Rollins was playing him up the middle left-handed hitter you're playing him towards the bag a little bit he couldn't get to it and LaRoche is a guy who kills the Phillies here at 384 in this park with six doubles six homers and 14 runs batted and they get him out on one pitch and now his brother Andy will bat it's like playing an American Legion team yeah <laughs> that's right family affair huh? Of course, Andy and Adam's dad, Dave, played a long time in the big leagues in the 70s and 80s. He was a pitcher. Yep. Whoa. A little chin music there. It's one ball and one strike. There's Adam, who was a pretty good pitcher in his own right. And a lot of folks thought when the Braves signed him that he would become a pitcher. Well, speaking of the Atlanta Braves, they had gotten rid of Adam LaRoche a few years ago, and they had a nucleus that included LaRoche, Brian McCann, Jeff Francoeur. Well, no more. Jeff Francoeur has been traded to the New York Mets for Ryan Church and Cash. That, uh, that deal kind of came out of nowhere, except you could kind of read between the lines some of the stuff that was going on in Atlanta that they were about ready to give up on Francoeur. Count remains two balls and two strikes to LaRoche. Yeah, Bobby Cox had benched him the last three ball games. And for Cor Frank Cor was saying the right things because they all have so much respect for Bobby Cox. You know, like, hey, I don't write out the card, all that stuff. But you know, I think maybe his days are numbered and he's gone. Eddie LaRoche is gone on that play by Pedro Feliz. And that's something because he he was definitely their golden boy, a local guy, uh, a tremendous minor league prospect, came up and tore it up in the big leagues. And then he started to go south a few years ago, and he hasn't come north yet. Former number one pick. Well, he's come north to play for the Mets, but that's about it. <laughs> it's kind of the same story with Ryan Church. He mm -hmm. was never really a favorite of Jerry Manuel. When Manuel took over for Willie Randolph, so. Two away, here's Damian Moss. And Moss hits the first pitch foul. Pirates last year made a ton of moves, and one of the moves was to Get Damian Moss from the Boston Red Sox. He was involved in the Jason Bay deal, and he's just been hit by a pitch. Excuse me, Brandon Moss. Well, 
It happened in the first inning, of course, but it was a home run. He got the first two guys out pretty fast. And then the home run, now two outs and the hit batter. Blends only hit three batters. He does pitch inside, though. That's one thing that helps him is he will move the hitter's feet. Well, bring Jack Wilson to the plate. Wilson takes one inside, 1 0. There he goes, throwing a fastball in. Joe has pitched in one game against the Pirates, and it was a dandy. He got a no decision. He allowed just one hit over seven innings. That's seven strikeouts. <laughs> and I'm not sure what happened there with Paul Bacco. He didn't think he caught that. I don't think. Let's see. Does he think he has this? No. See, it was <laughs> it barely stuck in the webbing of the glove, and he was about ready to chase it. Outside quarter, two and one. You mentioned Carlos can't start tonight, and uh, Ruiz may not play for a day or two. But I asked Charlie Manuel about that. Heaven forbid he had to do something and use him, and he said he could use him. Yeah. In fact, Carlos said that today that he could hit if he needs him to, or he could catch if he has to. Right. As that one scoots along the grass, and Jack Wilson's retired, and the inning is over. So the Pirates strand one. We've played one and a half, middle of the second, and the Pirates lead at one nothing. Will be represented by five different players, and it's the first time since 1995 that the Phillies will send five players to an All-Star game. Well, they are the world champions. That was my thought when somebody <laughs> asked me the other day about you know the Phillies adding Shane Victorino. I said, well, you know, they did win the World Series last year, and Victorino has really good numbers. The All-Star game is always one of those things, you know. Phillies have had that happen, you know, where maybe a manager picks somebody close to to his own fancy that maybe you thought your guy should go, but that's you win the World Series, you got your manager in there. Phillies the opposite way. Moss goes back and he's there. Well, here are the different seasons in which the Phillies had five All Stars go to the game. Of course, the late 70s and even 81. It's yep. a really good team. That was pretty neat this year, right here, of course. 76, the All Star game was in Philadelphia. So that was really, you know, the Phillies were really starting to come out of the bad years at that point, you know, where they were such a bad team and they started to turn around a little bit in 74, then 75, then, of course, did turn the corner in 76. And look at those players. How about 95? Pete Cliff Slocum made Cliff the All Star Slocum, game. Yeah. Well, in 76, which was kind of neat, four of those guys were homegrown. The only one was Dave Cash that had, that had come over in a deal. So that was another thing the organization was really proud of at that time. Cliff was the winning pitcher in that 95 All-Star game. Yeah, they had gotten him in a trade.
Oh, and two the count to John Mayberry. And, you know, the deal in which the Phillies put Chris Coast on waivers certainly benefits John Mayberry. As the young uh, left fielder gets a chance to stay up here and possibly will stay with the team beyond the All Star break as a bat off the bench. Right. Because when Ibanez gets back and hopefully stays healthy, plays against all kinds of pitching, not that they're going to platoon. And Mayberry's down on strikes, and there are two outs. And there is Raul Ibanez, who made a few rehab starts, one with Redding, a couple with Lehigh Valley. And he was, he had a hop in his step today before batting practice, getting a chance to get out there with his teammates again. Well, two right handers coming up Saturday and Sunday, and the odds are he will play in those games. Start them. Yeah, Charlie just figured since he played the last few days, he'd give him tonight off against the left hander and put him back in there because he wanted wants him to play at least two games, major league games, before they head to St. Louis. And then he'll take BP on Monday, BP on Tuesday, playing the game. As Baco lines one right at the second baseman Freddie Sanchez, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the fills. We've completed two. And Pittsburgh still hanging on to a one-nothing lead. Phillies assistant general manager Scott Profrock and I guess it's the perfect time to have somebody up in the booth because there's really not much going on today Scott. No, oh, no, it's it's been real slow <laughs> real slow. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I mean I looked up a little while ago and didn't realize the game had started. So yeah, <laughs> we got a lot going on. Well, it, it's been busy. It's a paper pushing day. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of things going on. <laughs> well, the first thing off the bat, there was a report that uh, Ruben Amaro was down in the Dominican Republic watching Pedro Martinez uh, throw a simulated game in which the Phillies were interested in. And then I saw Ruben walking in front of the dugout, so I know he's here in Philadelphia. What can you tell us about Pedro throwing today? Well, we uh, we had the opportunity to see him pitch again, and uh, you know, are uh, in the process of evaluating, uh, you know, uh, whether he's a fit for us or not. So. Zach Duke is the batter. The count one ball and one strike to him, and it's now one and two. It's one of the biggest things is that this time of the year there are a number of teams that are looking for pitching help and you know in this day and age pitchers can come from all different spots. Oh absolutely I mean you, you know you have to you have to keep an open mind and uh, you know we certainly have, uh, have done that and uh, you know look at Rodrigo Lopez I mean you know he was a, a guy we uh, you know had uh, Chuck was looking for some guys that uh, you know, had the opportunity to with some major league experience to, uh, you know, fill out the AAA staff, help help, you know, develop some of the guys down there. And he went down there and he pitched good. And he's, he's done a fine job for us here so far. So, uh, you know, that can that can happen with, uh, you know, with any number of different avenues. So. What's your feeling? You know, people go back and forth on this because it can really be annoying for organizations this trading deadline you know where there's this frenzy every every uh, July it used to be June 15th now it's July 30th do you like it not like it do you think it's a good thing for baseball 
Well, I certainly think it's a good thing for the fans and uh, and uh, for the media. Uh, you know, we, we you know, I think we saw it today with the, the whole Ruben Ruben in the Dominican story. Right. That, that things can get a little out of control, but uh, uh, you know, it, it uh, I think it generates interest and you know, it puts pressure on pressure on teams to decide you know whether they're in it or not. And you know, obviously, we're in first place, so we're in it, and uh, we got to look towards uh, you know doing things to make the club better and, and uh, continue to uh, you know stay where we are. And, and as you know, we saw today, the Mets and the and the Braves uh, made a trade, and I'm sure they both think that's going to make them better. So you know, it's it's competitive situation, and uh, you know, we have to continue to look for opportunities to make ourselves better. Freddy Sanchez is the batter with two away here at the top of the third, and the count is no balls and two strikes to him. And along those lines, Scott, sometimes you have to make difficult decisions. And today, Chris Coase was put on waivers, claimed by the Astros, so his time here in Philadelphia is done. Yeah, and, and you know, Chris, I wasn't here for all the contributions that he's had over the over the years, and it's a great story. And and you know, uh, give him a lot of credit for the perseverance and and the dedication and the efforts that got him to the major leagues and, and made him a productive member of a world championship team. And, He's got a lot to be proud of, and we wish him nothing but the best. But in our situation here, with Raul coming off the DL uh, and not, you know, wanting to be somewhat cautious with him, uh, we felt it was it was a, a better fit to have John Mayberry here to, to you know give him a rest in the outfield than to keep Chris as a you know as a uh, you know, right-handed bat off the bench. And uh, like I said, we wish him nothing but the best. But uh, we think we're, we're you know we're in a, we're a better club under the circumstances. Two and two, the count to Freddie Sanchez, and he hits it sharply toward third, a foul ball. You know, you just mentioned that claimed on waivers. That can be kind of a hairy thing for an organization. Would you explain that, Scott? What happens if you, in fact, claim a guy? Well, in, in this particular situation, they were outright waivers, uh, and if he had cleared. Uh, we would have outrighted him off the the 40 man roster. Uh, we're currently at uh, right now. We're at 39. We were at 40. And you know, in in considering you know some of the potential moves down the road, uh, we wanted to make sure we had some flexibility. So uh, you know, and you know, we hope we'd hoped uh, you know to keep him in the organization. But you know, from Chris's perspective, it gave him an opportunity uh, you know to stay in the major leagues and. Uh, you know, continue his career uh, at this level. So, but the outright waivers we put him on were irrevocable. So, if he was claimed, he was gone. So now, do you have to be careful when you claim somebody? Because is he your player then? Under the under those types of waivers, yes. The uh, the trade waivers that will will come into effect after the after July 31st, those are what are called revocable, meaning that the club can pull the pull them back. The thing that will be real interesting this year, though, is, you know, with the economics the way they are, uh, it'll be interesting to see how many teams are actively claiming to try to block other clubs because in some instances you could very well end up with a player that, you know, has got a hefty yeah. contract on your hands. Uh, and it's happened a number of times over the years. And in these economic situations, there may be some clubs that, you know, I don't want to say out of necessity, but, um, you know, would prefer to, have someone else pay the pay the player's salary if they're out of the race. The most famous one was probably Randy Myers. Yes, sir. Well, did that cost them a lot of money? Yep. yep. That ball gets away from Baco and up to second base goes Freddie Sanchez. So the Pirates have a runner in scoring position with two outs here at the top of the third inning. And the count two balls and one strike to to Garrett Jones. Here's a look at what happens here with Baco. Caught it a wild pitch and hit the umpire's foot there and went dead. But uh, Sanchez, good base running, winds up at second base in scoring position. Blanton's had a little trouble tonight with two outs. They gave up the home run to Garrett Jones in the first with two away. And Jones, big swing here, and it's two balls and two strikes. Wait a minute, I got a fastball again. <laughs> and where that other fastball landed. He hit that ball landed. a long way. Yeah, that was pretty far. Scott, I know you can't ever talk about specific players, but. It's safe to say, I think, as we found out the last couple of weeks, that that things have been busy for the organization to, as we get closer to this trade deadline. No question. I mean, you know, we've got we've got needs that we've identified. Uh, you know, we'd like to upgrade our starting pitching. Uh, we'd like to upgrade our right-handed bat off the bench, uh, and we, you know, we'll take a look at uh, you know, the possibility of upgrading our bullpen too. So uh, there are always areas that uh, we feel we can improve, and if we find a situation that's 
that's right for us and, and makes sense and uh, you know it, it's certainly something we look for look, look to move forward on. That ball was a little low to Garrett Jones so ball four now the Pirates have runners on first and second with two outs. Well, he threw a tally fastball the pitch before it tried to get him to freeze on it and that pitch is down and away and low. Hey um, Scott with the with the wild card now has it changed the dynamics that so many teams are in contention this late as far as being able to make deals. Yeah there, you know you look at the standings there's you know maybe seven or eight clubs that you know you can you know from our situation look at and say you know well, they may not they may they may be out of it but you know it, and in a couple of situations you, you know you may call them up and say hey you know you may, are you selling and, and they'll they'll look at you like what are you talking about you know, we're still in it. And again, there's not that many clubs that are a double digit behind in any of the divisions, and, and certainly not when it comes to the wild card. So uh, it really becomes an individual assessment on the on the behalf of you know those clubs, uh, you know, to let you know that they're in that mode before you really want to approach them, because you know you can you know send some some inconsistent signals. Yeah. Well, there you see the wild card, the Giants, which is a, I think a stunner to a lot of folks, but their pitching's been so good. They lead the wild card. Colorado is second, one one game off the pace. Milwaukee three games off the pace with the Florida Marlins, and then the Cubs with five off the pace. There's a squibber in front of the plate. Blanton's got it, and the inning is over. Dolman is retired. And Scott, with that, we thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tom. All right, Scott Profile, uh, okay. Philly's assistant general manager. Our guest. We go to the bottom of the third. It's one nothing Pirates. Answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. What do you think, Wills? I'll think about that one. I got a shot at that. At least I know I saw it. Well, there were some pretty good players on that Pirates team at 79. Of course, they won the World Championship. Mm -hmm. The We Are Family. Yeah, they beat the Orioles in the World Series. That was an awfully cold World Series. Yeah, it snowed down there. Yeah. I don't know where they, I think they had a game postponed, kind of count of snow in Baltimore. Well, we begin the bottom of the third. Almost snowed here during the World Series. Well, there were flurries on that off day. As Joe Blanton takes a strike at the knees, the count is on. Big Joe is one for 23 this season. And it's 0 2. Rich Duby had the starting pitchers out taking some batting practice as a group the other day. They enjoy that. Blanton's down on strikes. One away. Phillies baseball is brought to you by AT&T. Your world delivered by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. And by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW. 
Sold out crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. Fireworks after tonight's ball game. As Jimmy Rollins, 0 for 1, grounded the third, his first time up, and he pulls one towards shortstop. Jack Wilson backed up on it, but he had a quick release. So J. Rolls retired. Shane Victorino walked to the plate. Shane was genuinely appreciative of all of the votes and the time that the fans put in to get him to the All-Star game. Over 15 million people voted for Shane to go to St. Louis. 15 million. Or I should say there are 15 million votes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That but still sounds still a good. lot of people. You know, not, when you get to 15 million. I mean, our guys in the in the press room, what they have, 30 or 40,000? They had a lot. <laughs> Three guys. There, there were some nice guys too. I mean, yeah. They were very into it. They're big fans too. They love baseball. Another base hit for Victorino. He's got a double and a single. And he now has 106 hits, which is six behind Miguel Tejada for the National League lead. Well, Duke's doing what you should do with Shane and, and, and right hand, especially he's trying to throw him off speed. But he hit a curveball for a double and just hit a changeup. This, but this changeup is up. And he does a nice job of staying back and hits the ball hard to left field. So a base runner for the Phillies, Victorino, was picked off of second base, caught stealing going over to third. But he was on the base pass for Chase Utley his last time. Yeah, it kind of took them out of that inning. You know, who knows whether they would have scored or not. But uh, Duke does have an inside move and he used it effectively. A lot of guys can't do that, that move that he showed. It's just so awkward and uh, you know he is one of those guys that does it effectively and uh, and Shane did not read that he was not going to home plate that he was going to turn on that inside move and, and he got it. Well, Shane had a long conversation with Davey Lopes before he went back out to center field when that inning came to a close and Davey was probably saying you know we told you that he had a good inside move. Two and oh the count to chase. There's Dave. We had a nice talk with him before the game, and he said he thoroughly enjoyed being on the program. He's lying. He did. He told really? me he really enjoyed it. I, I thought he was too. But and after sitting there with him, he says, "No, I like doing that." I said, "Yeah, but we never know what you're going to say." <laughs> he says, "Yeah, I'm a little dangerous." <laughs> he likes that. He said it's fun though. He enjoyed it, so uh, uh, I imagine he'll come back. Well, I think it's great when Davey or Rich Doobie or Milt Thompson, or Pete McCannon, Sam Perlazzo, all those guys get to come on because, quite honestly, I'm not sure if if all the fans in the Delaware Valley understand everything that they do to make this team so successful. Well, we're lucky enough to learn something from them every day. You just ask questions, they teach you the game, and that's kind of fun to have them on the air, and it's a good step off move there. Have them on the air like that and, and just talk baseball, talk inside baseball. I don't know if fans really enjoy that. And to me, not knowing Davey until he came here to Philadelphia, he could be one of the best base running coaches I've ever ever come across. Well, he really knows what he's doing down there, and he enjoys it. He he likes guys to steal bags because he thinks that's a big part of the game. He was a tremendous base stealer and a disruptor. He was really annoying when he was with the Dodgers. You know, you just didn't like him. And now, of course, we all love him. On everything he learned or he knows it seemed to be passed on from Maury Wills to him. Mm -hmm. Well the Dodgers had a great organization back in the days when Davey came up with with Garvey and say and look and, uh, uh, and Russell. Line drive toward right center field that's it for a base hit. Victorino's not going to stop and the ball gets away from McCutcheon. Sam's going to wave him around. He's headed to the plate. The throw by Sanchez on one hop. He is safe at the plate. The aggressiveness by Sam Perlazzo to try to tie this game up here at the bottom of the third. That's great coaching. I mean, you hit it right on the head. Outstanding job by Perlazzo. You know, he knew it was going to take a perfect throw to get him, and they decided to gamble there. And he had him coming all the way, waving that left hand, windmilling it, and the throw uh, 
It was Sanchez who threw it. It's wide. And he gave him a chance to slide around. Here it is. McCutcheon boots it, but he didn't go that far. But with two outs, he was running. And now Sanchez's throw is up the line. The catcher comes out to get it. Dome it. And Victorino sees that slides around him. And the Philly, st Philly steal a run right there. That's a great slide, too, by Victorino to get away from the tag. Yeah, he did and it. He did a really good job of reading where the catcher was and where that throw was coming. And it's the first error in 65 games for the Pirates. Yeah, that's right. We just talked about what a good defensive team they are. And that'll be an error charge to McCutcheon, his second of the year. And the count one ball and no strikes to Howard. And it's one and one. And at least saw what was going on down there. Tremendous base running by him to get all the way to third. And you see Victorino trying to catch his breath. Said Victorino's not going to stop. And the ball He's been doing a lot of running down here the last couple yeah. of minutes. <laughs> Look at him watching. Look at him watching. That's great base runner, too. Absolutely. Because that's all him, because Sam's worried about Shane. No, he's on his own there. One and two, the count to Howard. But it was really a great job to watch from the angle we had of Sam Perlazzo getting an angle on the play and then starting to windmill Victorino as he got towards third base. And Shane never broke stride. Sam is a really good third base coach. Charlie uh, Manuel added two coaches this year. You, know, you just do that sometimes. And Pete McCann is bench coach and Sam Perlazzo. See Jimmy there with him. They have been tremendous additions. I see right there, he was waving him before the play, before he got to third base, and that made sure that Victorino did not break stride. Because if he breaks down at all, he can't score. Three and two, the cotton out of Howard. And sometimes base runners do that on their own. They try to think they know what's going on, and they'll break it down on their own, and he didn't do that. Luke used to say that all the time. Then let me coach you run. Ball four. Howard's aboard. Three walks. walks. Three walks by Duke in this game. That was one thing when John Duke which used to take the, the uh, players around the horn for base running in spring training. Was one thing I remember he would always say to them is, "You run, and I'll tell you what to do. Don't you decide what you're going to do if the play's behind you." And uh, that was a perfect example of Victorino with the play behind him, watching the third base coach and stealing the run. He also must have gotten a pretty good look at Ryan Howard or whoever was directing traffic at the plate telling him where to slide because he read that beautifully from Doman. Two outs the inning alive runners up first at third Phillies have tied it at one here at the bottom of the third. Well this helped get him on the all star team. I mean, 20 looks better than 19. And that's 20 right there. Jason's going to walk away from the play because Joe Kerrigan is going to come out to talk with Zach Duke. Joe's first year with Pittsburgh. John Russell's second year as the manager. The Pirates have John Russell, Gary Varsho as the bench coach, the four, Phillies' former bench coach. Don Long is the hitting coach. There's Varsh. Don Long is the hitting coach, and he was in the Phillies organization for a long time. And Joe Kerrigan. And they have a real Philadelphia flavor in their leadership, that's for sure. There's John Russell. Off the foot of Worth. John Russell is a minor league manager, won 666 games. Lost 667 games. And he caught Nolan Ryan's final no hit. That's right, in the Texas Rangers. He was a premier minor league manager when he was with the Minnesota Twins organization. 
In the air to left center field. Moving back is Garrett Jones. Into the alley. He's not going to get it. One hop off the base of the wall. Utley scores. Jones bobbles it. Ryan Howard's going to score easily. It's a two-run double for Jason Worth. And the Phillies are on top three to one. I'll probably score that a double and two RBIs because San Perlazzo had it coming all the way. If he put up the stop sign, maybe he scored an error then. But Jason, he got in on him the first time and popped him up. He got in on him a little bit there, but he still drove it well to the Southwest Airlines sign out there. And uh, coast into second with a stand up double and two more rippies. So now 56 RBIs for Jason. Here's Pedro Feliz. And a chopper to the right side. This should be the inning. As Freddie Sanchez throws him out. But it's a productive inning, an aggressive inning for the Phillies. They scored three runs, two on the double by Jason Worth, and they lead it by two. July 20th here in Philadelphia, three game series, and it wraps up with that Citizens Bank business person special on the 22nd of July. And don't forget, after the game, if you're at the ball game and you got a bunch of kids with you, they can run the bases. Compliments of Models. You can log on to Phillies.com, get your tickets today. Cubs are four and a half games back behind the Cardinals with that loss today. Ryan Ludwig had a big day. Four RBIs, three hits, and St. Louis. Which took two of three from the Brewers are playing some pretty good baseball right now as we begin the top of the fourth inning. And Gary Matthews joins us and quickly Adam LaRoche is behind 0 and 2. Yeah, St. Louis beating the teams that they have to beat, the closest teams to them, the Cubs and the Brewers. And then going to their home park. All they did with the Brewers, however, and beating them up. Well, you're right about that. They were at Wrigley today. Going on the road, hitting the road a little bit. One and two, the count to LaRoche, who fly to left his first time up. So, one of my friends, Chief Moreland, actually doing the game, ex teammate for the Chicago Cubs, doing play by play. He was doing the game today for Chicago? Yes. Oh, yeah. Bob Brindley must have had the day off. Day off or. Personal business. He wasn't there. Did you uh, yeah. call Keith and give him some pointers? I did call him. Just left him a message. Good luck. <laughs> He's good. He's been doing games anyway for the University of Texas. And the Roach is down on strikes. A slider from Joe Blanton. That's his fourth strikeout. And the Roach is going away talking to himself. As Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire, I like that uh, inside corner from Blatt. Yeah, inside corner and on a breaking ball, and that is a strike. You see that ball that got plenty of plate. Here's Andy LaRoche, and he hits one sharply right past Feliz. And Andy's bored with a one-out single. 
and that is the third base hit allowed by Blanton tonight. Sarge, it must be something you obviously have gotten a chance to watch your son play Major League Baseball, but it must be something for Dave LaRoche to watch his two boys play together well, for the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's got to be great having them both on the same team. There's so many good things about it. You don't have to use vacation to go see one in one city and a, <laughs> another week's vacation to go see the other in another city. And root for the same team. Right. You can watch one game each night. And if you want to, you can watch all the others, but just one. As Brandon Moss has the count, one ball and one strike to him. Yeah, I think the ultimate, however, was when Ken Griffey Sr. was able to play with his son. And how about going back to back home runs? Yeah, that had to be pretty good. Jason Worth continues to crush that ball. I don't like the way that he's hitting the ball, and all of them hitting with two outs. That one's to center field. Victorino got a very good jump and plenty of room for him. But what I liked in that third inning was just how aggressive the Phillies were on the base pass. You know, whether it be Victorino scoring on that ball hit by Chase Utley that was that went off the glove of McCutcheon. Or even you know, Ryan Howard motoring around on the the ball that Jason Worth hit. I mean, they were pretty aggressive on the base pass, and I think they've been that way on this homestand. Yeah, when you when you're aggressive like that, you put a lot of pressure on the opposition, making sure they got to make clean plays. They don't. You're able to capitalize. Well, Sarge loves the shutdown inning, and Joe Blanton has come back here, and he has shut down the Pirates after the Phils scored three runs in their half of the third. Middle of the fourth, three-one Phillies. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. John Mayberry leads it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Mayberry is 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. And he's behind in the count, 0 and 1. And Sarge, I think John Mayberry thought that when Raul Ibanez came back off the DL that he might be going back down to Lehigh Valley. But as Scott Profrock just told us, the Phillies thought it would be better to keep him up 
here in the major leagues. They waived Chris Coast. And now Mayberry will get a chance to be the fourth outfielder for this club and spell Ibanez as he continues to heal from that groin problem that he had that kept him off the kept him out of the lineup for all this time. Yeah, I'd like to see him start to swing a little better pitches. Looks like a fastball. And young hitters when they come up, they start trying to emulate a lot of the veterans, meaning that they want to guess. On what's coming. And when you're taught in the minor leagues, you're taught to locate and look for the ball and stay on that fastball. A roller right at Andy LaRoche. Good strong arm, and Mayberry's retired. Well, Sarge, how does he teach himself how to become a big league player when he's in the big leagues? Well, it's, it's difficult. I mean, because he's not going to get a whole lot of at bats. You know, and I think that he's, he, again, it's. Almost as if when you go up, you got to say, well, this might be my last at bat. How do I want to go out? And maybe that will get that adrenaline flowing to where you can swing the bat the way you're capable. I mean, we've seen him hit some long home runs. We need to see him hit some doubles. Paul Baco lines one right at LaRoche for the second out. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Ford Fusion Hybrid, the most fuel efficient midsize. Drive one today by Coca Cola, the official soft drink of the Philadelphia Phillies. And by the Pennsylvania Lottery, benefits older Pennsylvanians. Every day, you must be 18 or older to play. Please play responsibly. Two outs, Joe Blanton's up at the plate. Joe struck out his first and only time up. He's 0 for 1. And it's one ball and one strike to him. Freddie Sanchez is going to have some time on this one. And Zach Duke has a 1 2 3, bottom of the fourth inning. So the Phillies are retired in order here in the home fourth. They lead it 3 1 as we go to the fifth. Here's your chance of a lifetime. It's the Phillies Fantasy Camp. It's January 20th through the 24th in Clearwater, Florida. The package includes hotel accommodations, practice, 
with an instruction from baseball legends such as Mitch Williams, John Kruk, Greg Luzinski, and the commish, Larry Anderson at the Carpenter Complex. For information, call 610-520-3400. Hurry, don't forget, space is limited. And you can come and uh, get yourself a Phillies uniform and take some swings. Can you imagine Larry Anderson, the commissioner? <laughs> Zach Duke swinging at the first pitch. And Jimmy Rollins in shallow center. And that's a good job by Joe Blanton to get that first out and get the pitcher out of the way. So one out and back to the top of the order for Andrew McCutcheon. And there is the commish. Hey, might be doing a little bit of working now, but I can guarantee you down there he does absolutely nothing. <laughs> Are you going to be down there for fantasy? Yeah, game? I went last year. Had a lot of fun. It's a, it's really a great time. And uh, again, he starts it off, and we have the kangaroo court. I'm sure, he's good at that. Nothing's ever fair. <laughs> and he has a nerve to wear a. White gray wig like he's a judge. Hey, listen, if he's going to get into the position, he might as well get into it the right way. Well, he is into it. See, he's he's nervous that we're talking about his shirt and how nice it is. That's just a pretty good looking shirt. Obviously, he didn't pick that one out. <laughs> pretty good looking shirt he has on tonight. He thinks we're talking about his shirt. Uh oh. <laughs> he's taking the headphones <laughs> off. He's coming in. <laughs> Oh boy, lock the door. I was going to say, Christine, lock, lock the, door. the door. Here he comes, too. He's gone. <laughs> two balls, two strikes the count to Andrew McCutcheon. There he comes. <laughs> we weren't talking about your shirt, Larry. Police is going to have to hurry. And he throws out McCutcheon. Two outs here. Larry, we weren't talking about your shirt. We actually said talking about my clothes. No, no, we were. Well, we, we were kind of talking about your clothes. We were talking about Philly's fantasy camp, and Sarge was saying that Kangaroo Court is never fair. And we did say someone else picked your shirt out, so we were absolutely right about. Did that. you know it was my daughter, right? Well, right. I did not. No, I but, did not. But you but feel I, bad now? No, I don't. I said it was a good-looking yeah, shirt. It's a nice shirt. Thank no. you. But we were talking about your wig that you wear during fantasy camp. And Sarge was a judge. He was one of the chief justices. So why, why were you saying that it wasn't fair if you were one of the judges? Because I always, I, I'm always getting fine and getting. I, you know, it, does, it never comes out right. I'm just going to tell you that. I've well, got work to do. But it is a lot of fun. You do? Yeah, we did talk about that too. That you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with my BLP. <laughs> Thanks, well, goodbye, guys. Larry. <laughs> Count is one ball and one strike to Freddie Sanchez. And on the run is Ryan Howard over toward the crowd, and it's one and two. There's Joe Gaines. He got back at his spot. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Scott Brett gets wondering where the heck he went. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just left him hanging high and dry. That's not the first time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Little roller left side. Nice wool off the glove of Pedro. And Freddy Sanchez is going to be safe at first. I was going to say nice aggressiveness by Pedro to get there, but it went right off his glove. That's going to be an error charge to Feliz. And that's his sixth error of the season. Almost looks like it went underneath the glove. <laughs> J-Row actually almost tried to kick it when it went by. Off balance swing. Not an easy play there. You can see how it went right underneath the glove. Just Bad timing right there. He needs to get down a little bit more, and he would have actually had that ball. So the Pirates have a base runner here at the top of the fifth. Ryan Howard, a diving play, sprawls to his feet, wow. and of course wins the race to the bag. What a play by the big man over at first base. And that's the final out here at the top of the fifth inning. All of the reactions of Ryan Howard. To the glove side very quickly and then with plenty of time to spare to record the final out.
that ball, and then he gets up and tags first base. That's a good play. Now the Home Depot doing more on defense. Jimmy Rollins leads things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And he takes a pitch on the outside corner. You had a great analogy during the break. You said it was as if he tackled that ball. <laughs> he did. He just smothered it and grabbed it and was able to get right to the bag. Jay Roll aggressive first two times out. Swinging at the first pitch. His last at bat. Looking at a few more pitches. Again, trying to stay up the middle and the other way if he can. Well, Jimmy is 0 for 2. He's grounded up to third. Grounded up to short. And You know, Sarge, looking at some of his numbers today. For a leadoff hitter in the National League, he is third in runs scored with 43. First in doubles, he hits one on one hop to Wilson. And second in RBIs. So, with all of his struggles offensively, he is still among the leaders in a handful of categories for leadoff batters in the NL. Yeah, well, that's that first ball he's hit hard, but it just shows you what type of game he has. Now, just imagine if he was hitting like 280, 285. He'd be all-star caliber player for sure because his numbers would elevate. Absolutely. Now with one out, one of the Phillies all-stars, Shane Victorino, stands in. He's two for two with a run scored. They're just having one heck of a first half. Off the end of the bat, a flare to Freddie Sanchez. Duke now has retired six in a row. Yeah, he made an adjustment. He's got him first two times up. He hit fastballs. That pitch was a changeup, but that's a pitch you don't want to swing at, and then you want to force the pitcher to throw you the fastball by him throwing you balls. Last year, Zach Duke in 31 games was just five and 14. I think one of the telling stats for Duke. Is that he allowed 230 hits in 185 innings? I mean, that's just way too many hits. Yeah. Well, you know, his pitching coach, Kerrigan, will be able to help him with those type of stats. He's got a decent ERA this year. Well, and plus the the hits per innings pitched are much better. In fact, counting tonight, he's allowed 119 hits. In 122 and two thirds innings. It's pretty good. That yeah, is, as long as you have less hits than you do the innings. Sometimes young pitchers get caught up on how many victories, but you can tell how a pitcher's pitching by innings and ERA. Two and two, the count to chase. And chase jerks a foul, and it remains two and two. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Reds have jumped out to a 2 0 lead over the Mets. Joey Votto, a home run. That game's at the top of the fifth inning. New York is 3 and, and 10 in its last 13 games, and five and a half games back behind the Phillies. And a called strike three, and Utley is down looking on strike. Second strikeout, make it the third for Zach Duke. And it's the second straight 1 2 3 inning for the Pirates left hander.
Ryan Howard returns for the home run derby and his second all-star appearance, and he will do it in his own backyard. And thanks to all the fans from Malvern to Maui, the Flying Hawaiian was double-clicked into the 33rd and final spot on the NL roster. Worth watching? Oh, yes, it will be, because Jason Worth has been added to the roster as well as an injury replacement. The gateway to the West is chock full of Phillies, and it is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. Well, that Independence Blue Cross Phillies of the Week segment is getting longer and longer with all the selections the Phillies have gotten this year. As Jason Worth will take care of Ryan Gomez to begin the top of the sixth inning. First time Sarge since 1995 that the Phillies will have five All Stars in the Midsummer Classic. And that says an awful lot about the youth and how good the youth is here in Philadelphia. And let's think about yeah. this. Of the five, all five are position players. There's no pitchers in there. No, and that is a little bit unusual, especially when the team's in first place. Adam LaRoche takes a break at ball for strike one. It'll be quite an honor, especially for the new guys, though, like a Bagnez that's going to be playing in there for his first time. Abanez, Jason Worth, and Victorino all making their first appearances. And, you know, Jason is a third generation player in his family. You know, his uncle Dick was a shortstop for the then California Angels. His grandfather, Ducky Schofield, won a world championship with the 1960 Pirates. And you know, the fact that he's able to not only win a world championship, but go to an all star game, that's pretty impressive. And Joe Blanton gets Adam LaRoche looking on strikes for the second time tonight. Well, it's kind of settled down there. Look at the movement on the pitch there. It kind of starts almost knee high and the movement moving away outside. The road's giving up on that ball. It's a pretty good pitch. And Andy LaRoche swings at the first pitch. An easy hop for Pedro and an easy inning for Joe Blanton. One, two, three, go the Pirates. Blanton's retired four straight. This was a quick one for him. We go to the bottom of the six with the Phils leading it by two. Grab your bag, it's on. By WB Mason. Who but WB Mason for amazingly low office product prices. And by McDonald's. Introducing new Angus burgers made with juicy 100% Angus beef. Available with premium toppings in three varieties for just $3.99. McDonald's, I'm loving it. What well, the fans are loving here in Philadelphia are all the home runs the Phillies have hit this year. 119 home runs. 21 by Ryan Howard, 119 home runs, the most in the National League, and third most in baseball. As we said during the opening of the telecast, the Phillies are just the second team in baseball history to have four players with at least 20 home runs 
by the All Star game. And the last team to do that were the 2000 Blue Jays. They had yep. Carlos Delgado, Tony Batista, Jose Cruz Jr. And you know the fourth one is Arch? Boy, I knew you were going to ask me that there. Just give me a minute. Now you were broadcasting for the Blue Jays at that time. And here are the four Phillies Ibanez, Howard, Utley, and Worth. Sean Green. Raul Mondesi. Raul Mondesi, that's right. In fact, Mondesi had 20 before the All Star break as Howard goes down swinging and then was injured 10 games after the break and didn't finish the year. Well, the Colorado Rockies are coming to town Tuesday, August 4th at 7.05. It's a three game series. The series kicks off on the 4th at 7.05. Wednesday, the 5th is also a 7.05 start. And then Thursday the 6th is the Citizens Bank Business Person Special and our Raul Ibanez pride of the Phillies print all fans compliments of Citizens Bank. And after the game all kids can run the bases thanks to Modell Sporting Goods. What do you remember about that team Sergeant 2000 the Blue Jays team. Well, they could really hit that's one of the things and they drove the ball real well then I believe that's the time Carpenter was there and Roy Holiday good young pitchers that they had but I don't th think at that time too because they were really trading away a lot of different players and you know you mentioned Mondesi and boy he was a good player but he couldn't stay uh, healthy yeah, in fact when he got hurt Brad Fulmer kind of picked up where Mondesi had left off and Fulmer he had a great home run year that season had a good year end up getting traded uh, going to the Texas Rangers uh, for a while. Well, Jason Worth with his 20 home runs is part of that category. And the count two balls and two strikes to him. Jose Cruz Jr., one of the kids that really should be playing in his prime today, but just all of a sudden stopped hitting. And there's a kid that hit 30 home runs in the major leagues. Switch hitter. Sometimes players just lose their confidence in terms of hitting. Three and two, the count to Jason. Jason Worth gave the Phillies this this lead with a two run double as last time up. Garrett Jones had bobbled that ball in left center field but I don't think he would have gotten Ryan Howard anyway. No another two out base hit and that's what you like to see. Shoots that one into the luxury suite level and then back down to the lower level. And one of the great things about Jason going to the all star game is not only is it his first trip. But you know St. Louis is not too far from Springfield Illinois so you know his entire family is going to be there to watch him play in that game. And Charlie still has a decision to make. He needs to name a starter in center field. Charlie was saying today that he had not made a decision on who would start in center field but there's every chance that Shane Victorino could get the nod and be the, the starting center fielder in the all star game. You think so. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm thinking uh, Jason might end up there at, in center field. You know, and you got to play the two guys that was voted in for right. sure, and Abanez and Braun, who plays with the Milwaukee Brewers, fine outfielder. And I'm sure, the fans remember him here. He ended up getting hot and hasn't stopped hitting since. Going to the count to Pedro. Well, Shane is the only center fielder that's currently on the National League roster. You know, everyday center fielder. Yeah. Well, we have seen Jason play center field. He's a good athlete. He can play center. And again, Victorino could get the the nod as well, like you mentioned. Andy LaRoche cuts off Jack Wilson. 
And Pedro's retired to finish up this sixth inning. One, two, three, go. The Phils, ten in a row. Retired by Zach Duke, and the Phillies still hanging on to a two-run lead. Well, back here at the top of the seventh inning, the Pirates will send Brandon Moss, Jack Wilson, and the pitcher spot up here against Joe Blanton in our Verizon Wireless game summary. It's uh, been a lot of Joe Blanton tonight, Wills. Yeah, game's kind of gone in quick bursts tonight for the scoring. The home run by the Pirates and the Phillies with three quick runs of their own. And uh, pitching's been great, Tom, by both Blanton and Duke when you get right down to it. Duke just. You know the Phillies bam 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 hit him with that three spot and uh, Bland's only given up the home run so far. Good ball game. Joe Bland has faced 25 batters tonight and he has thrown 21 first pitch strikes. Well, he's had a little two out trouble tonight in some innings and uh, you know one inning was because of an error. That ball went flying in there pretty fast. Everybody's okay. Look Watch out. out. Ooh, that's a bad one. Look, everybody's okay. He's throwing these breaking balls into uh, Moss, trying to throw back foot breaking balls to them, and they're elevated a little bit, and he's way out in front. And who is he hammering them? Moss has been hit by a pitch and fly to center, and it's one to two. You know, you look at the trends for the Pirates this year 38 and 47 on the season. Last place of the Central, they have scored either one run or less in 24 games this year. Wow. Remember, too, early on in the season, everybody was pointing to them as being the surprise team. Well, they were getting great pitching. To Ryan Howard, keeps his glove down. Blanton now is retired five straight. Mm. You see what the Pirates have done the last nine seasons. Their struggles of being less than 500 have gone all the way back to the 90s. I mean, fourth place is the highest they have finished since 2000. And they are 38 and 47 now. Eight and a half games off the pace, but you know, I hate to say it. If you're the Cardinals, that's not a walk in the park, park just yet. I mean, the last place team is just eight and a half games out. Yeah, well, that's going uh, that's going to be a good race because you figure the Cubs have to get hot at some point. Now maybe they won't, but the odds are they're going to make a run because they they have great personnel. The Cardinals have been unbelievable this year because of their pitching and pulls. And for at least today, Ryan Ludwig. Yeah. 
Chase calls everybody off, but then Victorino decides that he has a better view of it. Well, that's a play the center fielder, any outfielder should do when he can, when he's able to pull that off, is run those infielders out of there because it's such an easy play for an outfielder. Much more difficult play for an infielder retreating like that. Last season with two months over the 500 mark, the year 2000 for Pittsburgh. That's unbelievable. And that's not a whole lot of excitement for the fans that only one month since 2000 or 2001, I should say, that they've been over 500. And now they're trying to regroup again. There's a Pirates fan. And change some things around. It's tough, you know. And they have a great ballpark too. It's one, of the, one of the best new ballparks in the league. Beautiful. And Duke is down on strikes. Joe Blatt throws 15 pitches here in the seventh inning to get the Pirates one, two, three. He's through seven. Phillies lead it by two. Quiz answer. Here's the question again. Which pirate player was the 1979 All-Star Game most valuable player? Wheels, you got a guess? I'm going to guess either Stargell or Parker. Pick one. Stargell. You should have went alphabetical. Ah. The answer is Cobra, huh? Dave Parker. All right. Log well. back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing Dodge. Stuff the fans. That was the year he shared the MVP with Keith Hernandez, wasn't right. it? Right, 79, yeah. That was close. Boy, Dave Parker was something. Of course, Willie Stargell's in a class of his own, but Dave Parker for a few years, about as good a player as he had in the league. Wheels, did that youngster look familiar to you that we just showed on the television? Um, it's Mayberry, fouls it back. I didn't notice. Sorry. No resemblance to Mike Miller, our cameraman oh. over on the first base side? Yeah, that's right. Young Mick Miller? I saw him over there with him uh, when I came in the ballpark tonight. Teaching him at a young age how to run that camera. That's exactly it. Keeping the Miller family from Marty to Mike to Mick. <laughs> Pirates have a pitcher up in the bullpen, a right hander. Phillies, somebody's stretching out there. That's uh, Evan Meek. Strikeout pitcher. That guy's got a good arm. Mayberry may have broken his bat on that one. Wilson throws him out. See all these weak ground balls hit by right handed hitters tonight. And that's because of that change. Up. Well, these lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank, the most seven day branches of the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. 
And what a beautiful night. Phillies are leading a three to one. Fireworks after the game tonight. Paul Bacco's 0 for 2. Bacco's lined out twice. He hits that one sharply. Nice play by Freddie Sanchez. That was a really good play. Bacco's retired for the third time. Yeah, that ball guy was by Freddie Sanchez. And he reached out and snared it. That one was hit hard. We talked about some of the weak ground balls tonight. This baby is hit hard. You see it? it is. It's fine. Really good see it from that angle. And then he snared it, threw him out. Good job by Freddie Sanchez, all star second baseman. There's been a lot of talk about the deals that the Pirates have made recently. And you see Sanchez leads all second baseman. Oh, he's tied with David Eckstein with a 997 fielding percentage. As Blanton loops one to right center. McCutcheon comes over, so does Moss, and Moss makes the grab. Anyway, there's a lot of reports that Sanchez may be the next one to go for Pittsburgh. We shall see. What we do know is we're going to the eighth inning, and so is Joe Blanton with a Center more in your car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 800 947 Auto and buy your local Chevy dealers. Well, if you're ready for the 2009 Major League Baseball All Star game, you better be ready for Shane Victorino. Catch all the action live from St. Louis on Tuesday, July 14th. And all four of the Phillies representatives that will be there on the field. They're going to let everybody know that this one counts because if the National League wins, well, then the National League representative will have home field advantage in the postseason. Andrew McCutcheon will lead it off here in the top of the eighth inning. Well, we're, uh, JC Romero's up to start the inning. And that's because Garrett Jones, left hand hitter, is third. Domit, you'd rather him bat right handed than LaRoche. Is next, and he's left-handed. Andy LaRoche, and you only have a two-run lead, so they could be thinking possibly tying run come to the plate. Obviously, go ahead; they'd make a pitching change. Well, Blatt went seven and a third in his last outing against the Mets, and he's handled McCutcheon tonight with a couple of strikeouts and a ground out. Well, I think if he were to get two outs and nobody on base, he'll stay with him. See the similarities between this start and his last one against New York. What well, difference really tonight? He's allowed a run. Well, that run he allowed, as you see that comparison to start, that run he allowed the night was uh, legit. <laughs> Over the bricks in center field yeah. on the Ashburn Alley by Garrett Jones. A cut in the center field. And Blanton is matched. The distance he went in his last start. He's now gone seven and a third. One out here in the eighth. Good job of getting in there on McCutcheon jamming him. Now Sanchez is a big hitter. Because they're not real strong off the bench right handed. And if he can get Freddie Sanchez out, he might just be able to stay in the game. Sanchez has been on base twice tonight. He singled. He also has reached on error by Pedro Feliz. He struck out in the first inning. 
And he takes a breaking ball for strike one. Pirates have made so many trades over the years because they, as we saw from that graphic before, haven't been in a whole lot of races in the Central. And one of the trades they made some years ago was to get Freddy Sanchez from the Red Sox. And he smokes one to the gap in left center field. And that one is off the base of the wall. And Sanchez is going to be aboard with his second hit of the night, his 26th double of the year. And that may bring Charlie Manuel out of the dugout. Yeah, I think he's thinking all along if the tie-in run comes up and it's one of these left-handed hitters, he's going to have Romero ready. And uh, he's ready. And here comes Charlie. And that was that was kind of programmed there. And uh, he really needed to get Sanchez out to stay in the game. Well, the crowd is realizing that this is going to be it for Joe Blanton. They're starting to cheer. And why not? He again has done a fantastic job this evening. As Charlie's going to come out and take the baseball from his big right hander. Blanton went seven and a third tonight. The runner on first is his responsibility. He acknowledges Andy Fletcher. And as he leaves, the crowd will give him a very warm round of applause. Job and uh, did throw him a lot of pitches, got a lot of first pitch out, struck out the first two batters in the game before the home run by Jones. Uh, and he hit his spots and used his breaking pitches, didn't throw a whole lot of change ups tonight, used his fastball, uh, used his slider, spotted his fastball, used his uh, curveball, 103 pitches, and the first pitch strike to 23 out of 29, a walk, six punch outs, four hits. So Blanton will sit and watch J.C. Romero as the new pitcher here in the eighth inning. 16th ball game for JC. No wins, no losses. A 2.92 ERA. See, lefties have hit the ball well against him. Righties, not as much. And he's got a lefty to deal with here with Freddie Sanchez on second base. So the tying runs at the plate. Phillies lead it 3 to 1. And this is the guy who went over the center field wall in the first inning. That's another reason why they made the change. Yeah, over the brick wall. Right. I mean, it was a shot. Over everything. Romero working it inside gets ahead no balls and one strike Jones against left handed pitching he hasn't hit off him that much but he's four for 12 333 and he has two homers but it's still a matchup you got to go for here after 103 pitches and what this guy did to him in the first inning and he's a tying run. Well, JC has come out and he has worked ahead 0 and 2. And it's time to take a look at our Firestone leaders. And the middle relief ERA, the Phillies, well, this is a bright spot for the bullpen. 3.02. Giants who have <laughs> just been really good all around pitching wise, far and away above everybody else at 2.01. Firestone, a tradition of innovation. 
Boy, the Giants pitching really kept them going. Huh? They don't score much. Sanchez again on second base. He's got a pretty good sized lead off the bag. Watching some of their late games at night when we go home, their bullpen is really good. Yeah, that Jeremy I felt has really helped them out of the bullpen. Look at a guy named Romo who's nasty. Tony Romo? Is he pitching there? <laughs> it's not Vicente either. Oh, okay. I can't think of his first name. I was watching him the other night. He's got kind of a frisbee slider and then he's got a harder one. And right hand hitters, they really pull off. Did he go? They'll appeal. No, says Tim McClellan. It didn't look like he went from up here. You know, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but that was a really good breaking ball, and it's amazing he didn't swing at it. It's a good call. Tim McClellan is the crew chief of this umpire crew. And he will not have the plate at all this series. He's, he's deliberate. Yeah, he's very deliberate behind the plate. He's a tall guy, so it takes him a while. Toward first base, Ryan Howard will wait for it. J.C. Romero was a little late there covering. He gets to the bag, and they just get him. Over to third goes Freddie Sanchez. You know, J.C. falls off to the third base side, and all of a sudden he went, uh-oh, I better get over there. Yeah, because Ryan was playing really deep there, not having to hold a runner on. So he's, he's way back at first base with a left-handed pull hitter up. So he cannot get there ahead of Jones. And he never touches it. <laughs> Touched in front and then went right over it. And Ryan Howard beat him to the play. Uh, to the back. So Ryan Dolman, who is a switch hitter, will bat right handed now against J.C. Romero. Dolman's been one of those guys throughout his career. You'd much rather him bat right than left. Not that he can't hit right. But he's more dangerous left handed hitter. Uh, so they like this matchup. And then there's another left handed hitter on deck. And Andy LaRoche. Dolman is just two for ten against left handers. Or this Adam year. LaRoche, excuse me. Tom. Yeah, Adam's, Adam a, Adam's on deck. And he delivers a change up for a strike. This is Dolman's first game back. He had been out with a fractured wrist. Well, Jason Jaramillo has been playing a lot for them, the former Philly. He and Robinson Diaz both did a nice job in his in his place behind the plate. And Ryan Madsen getting ready. Much of the starters have done such a good job on this homestead. How about the bullpen? One earned run in 19 to the third. That includes tonight. Four walks, 26 strikeouts. It's made everybody's life a lot easier. Yeah. Well, Romero trying to stay away. At least you hope he does. From Doman in this spot. You don't want to have anything middle in when it's a tying run up late in the game. You give him a chance to pull a ball and hit a home run. If they hit it the other way, tip your cap to him. Ryan Matson, Brad Lidge. Watching Baco, he's such a veteran catcher. He's really good at this, of staying away in these situations. Let's see what he does here. He, he was set up away on that pitch. Well, he's going to come back in. Trying to freeze him with a slider. Well, this game will encore tonight at 10:30 and tomorrow at 1 p.m. on the Comcast Network. So if you're coming to tomorrow's ball game, you can watch tonight's game in preparation for tomorrow night's game. Three and two, the count now to Domit. The career numbers for Domit. 32 of his 38 career home runs have come as a left-handed batter. Right, that's why you want to turn him around when you can. He reaches out and hits a one-hopper to J. Roll. Sets himself, and the inning is over. The bullpen does its job once again. They strand a runner on third base here in the top of the eighth inning. J. C. Romero picks up for Joe Blett, and now the offense will go to. One
of August, Tuesday, August 18th at 7.05. Three night games. And it includes Thursday the 20th, the Jewish Heritage Celebration and the Fanatic Value Day. You can order your tickets now by logging on to phillies.com. And we are past the midway point in the season. And this is what the Phillies have left. 38 home games, counting the two this weekend against the Pirates. 40 games on the road. Play the East 35 times, the West 17 more times, and the Central 26 times. The season has flown by, at least the first half. Yeah, you get, the all you get near the All Star break, and you know you're, you're always past uh, the halfway point of the season. Jimmy Rollins tonight is 0 for 3. It's been entertaining, been typical baseball season, full ups and downs. Jimmy sends it in the air to right center field. It's slicing away from McCutcheon. He's got good speed and he's able to track it down. You know, Joe Bland pitched great tonight. So Zach Duke. And he had the one in it and the aggressive base running by the Phillies and Sam Perlazzo's coaching down at third base really opened up that inning for him. Well, he's retired 14 straight. Right. And they haven't hit many balls hard either. Shane Victorino now with one away. He's two for three. The Pirates have a left hander, John Graybow, who's up and loosening. Brad Lidge is loosening for the Phillies, and they just watch Shane Victorino shoot one inside the third base bag, and he's going to get another extra base in. Two doubles and a single tonight for Victorino. And yeah, he's flying to St. Louis, and he's going to fly to St. Louis with more than 20. Two base hits and at least nine three hit games. Second double of the night kept that one right inside the bag down the line. A good cutoff out there by the left fielder, too. Garrett Jones made sure that thing didn't get in the corner because Victorino is one of those few guys that can get a triple to left field. It doesn't happen too often. He can do it. There's Grabo up top and Lidge firing at the bottom. John Russell's decided to stay with Duke. That double by Victorino ends a string of 14 straight retired by Zach Duke. They're playing really shallow in center and right. For uh, Chase Utley, a hard hit ball, even as fast as Victorino is, only with only one out, unless he gets a great jump. Could be a little tough to score him. Two outs, so obviously he's off in the crack of the bat, but right now you have to make sure you don't get double. There it is. There's that little inside move again, and now he's, you know, he got nailed with it in the first inning, and it shouldn't happen again. There's a whopper of an insurance run out at second base for the Phillies. Right, every run you can tack on right now keeps that time run further and further away from home plate for Lidge. John Russell, who last managed in the Phillies farm system just before he went to Pittsburgh. Brad Lidge warming up in the pen. Started in for Chase with runners in scoring position. Chase, who is tops among second basemen and runs with runs by eight, home runs by four, RBIs by three, and he's fourth behind Freddie Sanchez and hits. And it's two and two. You know, this year Joe Cronin's going into the Hall of Fame as Debbie Fisher makes that nice play on the right field line. Joe Cronin's going into the Hall of Fame this year. And you know there were people that watched him play that thought that he was you know, the best second baseman of that time. Well, 
we may be watching the continuation of the best second baseman of this year and Chase Utley. Well, the guy who holds a home run mark right now is Jeff Ken, and he's retired. Right. So there's a number to shoot for. And if Chase stays healthy, I, I can't imagine he's not going to shatter that record. Yeah. Can't even. You know, there's thought that someday Chase Utley could be a first baseman. Well, that's a long way off. You see his career numbers 299 lifetime hitter, 150 home runs, and I think he likes. That ahead of the current first base. Oh, he's very comfortable with this arrangement. And he's down on strikes. Chase rung up for the second time tonight by Duke. And he will leave it for that first baseman and Ryan Howard with a runner at second base. Here's Gary Barsho setting up the defense. No right hander up in their bullpen. Yeah, they had Meeks up before, or Meek up before, excuse me. I just say that because Worth is on deck. And obviously they'll pitch to Howard here, left, left. And Ryan out in front of that breaking pitch, and he's down 0 and 1. One of the right handers that the Pirates have in their bullpen is Joel Hanrahan, who they acquired from the Washington Nationals. There's Graybo, who's been throwing. Hanrahan was acquired yeah, 10 days ago, and he got a win last night for the Washington Nationals. Amazing, isn't it? When that, when that happened. Suspended game resume. A ball, one strike to count. He's a pitcher of record. They score. <laughs> I think they sent him the game ball. Then he got some texts, different messages from some of his old teammates. Like, we got one for you. Nice job tonight. How are you enjoying your off night, Philly? And it's now two and one to Ryan. Pretty good pitch to hit, even though it was a spinner. Tough to hit it though because he pulled off. So oh yeah. It's just that it wasn't the normal breaking ball that Ryan no. sees that it goes away, way away from. Him. No, it's just so hard to hit that thing when you open up that quickly. And you know, he's going to stay away from him as much as possible. Here, although Ryan Howard's one of those guys that can't hurt you the other way, but he hasn't hit one. And had a home run out that way in a long time. And he's down on strike, so Duke comes back and he gets the last two hitters on strikeouts. So he throws eight innings tonight. We go to the ninth, and the story becomes Brad Lidge to try to close this baby up.
Washington. Speaking about after the game, well, join Michael Barquette of the most extensive game breakdown. Get the expert analysis of former Major League pitcher Ricky Vitalico, plus exclusive player reactions with Derek Gunn on Sloan Toyota Presents Phillies Post Game Live after the game, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, it is not Brad Lidge time just yet. J.C. Romero stays in the ball game to face Adam LaRoche as we begin the top of the ninth inning. The Phillies leading it by two, three to one. And Charlie has done this before. You know, this is a, has not been an uncommon occurrence this year. He just likes this matchup. Lefty against lefty. The Roach hits it off the hands right to Ryan Howard. This is an easy play for Ryan. The Roach does not run well. And one away. And Charlie to his feet. And he's going to come out to the mound. That is going to be it for J.C. Romero. It's another example of how important it is when your starter gets you deep into a game. Because the manager then can use the guys at the back of the pen that he wants to use in situations. And he doesn't have to start using guys so early that he, you know, kind of gets boxed into a corner. And that's what Joe Blanton did for him tonight. Joe Blanton went seven to the third. J.C. Romero went one inning. Now he gives way to Brad Lidge to try to close this one out. They lead it three to one as we go to the top of the ninth inning. There's one man down. Brad Lidge is on. And one of the reasons why it's been a different one is because of the back end of the bullpen wheels. And Chano Park's the most valuable player in that game last night because Jamie Moyer got through five and then they needed some innings. Matson wasn't available. And Chano came in and did a great job for three. Turned it over to Brad Lidge. Got a couple of punch outs on the save and got everybody ready for the fireworks. Well, J.C. Romero kind of set things up for Brad Lidge tonight in relief of. Joe Blent. Romero went one inning. He had three straight ground outs. And now Brad comes into his 35th game. No wins, four losses. His ERA is under seven. He has 17 saves in 23 opportunities. And of course, he saved last night's ball game. And he needs to get two outs to make a, a winner out of Joe Blanton. And to give Zach Duke the setback in a complete game. Yeah. That guy did a tremendous job here tonight. But the Phillies have been better. Andy LaRoche takes a slider for strike one. LaRoche tonight is one for three. He's peppered Pedro Feliz a couple of times, and he's also singled past Pedro. And it's a fastball wide, one and one. Lidge has never faced Andy LaRoche. He has faced the Pirates a lot. This yeah. is his time in Houston. Right, playing in the same division all those years. This is the 46th game for Brad against the, the Pirates.
tied with 19 saves against Pittsburgh. That one, it's three and two. Well, the Pirates, everybody is up on the rail. It's kind of interesting. You don't see that that often. I think that's a John Russell thing. Well, somebody's or somebody, somebody orchestrated. Yeah, it. you know, someone's got him doing it. Okay. Slider called strike three. That is a nasty pitch, and it just throws Andy LaRoche. That was a knee buckler. Well, three-two slider after two pitch had been really wild. You know, Brad had thrown one slider well, the strike zone a high fastball, not even close. And now you're three-two and he drops that. Pitch. I mean, what are you gonna do as a hitter but freeze? Just whoa! Whoop, there go the knees. I mean, you, you pull off up here watching. That. He probably thought it was a little high too, as Moss sends one of the air deep down the right field line, but that's foul. Wow. That's a long one. There's your ooh ah ball. Oh, that's the back row up of the club, club level. Club level. Yeah. Man. Boy, he really unloaded on that, but got out front. He would have just made it 3 2. <laughs> Boy, that is deep in this. Sure seems. is. Here's the 0 1. The Pirates tonight have hit two long fly balls. <laughs> One fair and one foul. One ball and two strikes now to Moss. So the sold out crowd, 45,246. Here they come. The Phillies lead it by two. The count one and two to Brandon Moss. It's two and two. He's probably still thinking about that foul ball. <laughs> probably thinking about one more strike. Let's go. Line drive foul. Nice play down there by a fan in the first row. And the count remains two and two. Oh, he's a Pittsburgh fan and the Steel City champions. So we'll do it again with a count two balls and two strikes. In the air to right field, and that one is going to be gone. And that was a long one. But again, it's just three to two. Yeah, that's what we're saying. You know, even if he hits one out, it's three to two. That's. So important to keep that leadoff man off base or anybody off. That looked like a fastball too, and he crushed it. Just the third home run of the year for Moss. And now the wiggle room. Well, it's a little tighter for Brad. Yeah, that's a fastball. Down the middle. A little bit middle in even. And that got out in a hurry. That could hurt somebody. So two outs, a one-run game. Here's Jack Wilson, and here's the first slider. Now you have to guard the line because it's a one-run game, and they have Felice almost, almost standing on the back. See where he is? And Ryan's off the line over at first. Right, they'll take their chances that he's not going to squirt one down the line. Off the end of the bat, that's going to drop into left center field. So the tying one is aboard for the Pirates. Broke the bat in half. Well, Duke's night is done, and Delwyn Young is going to pinch hit for Pittsburgh. Switch hitter. He has never faced Brad Lidge. And Rich Duby is going to come out and just give the scattering report on this young man who's hitting 315 with a couple home runs this year. That's all this is, right? Wheels just scattered. Absolutely. Look. Everybody's coming in. Well, there's, there's nothing to say that he couldn't give him a little word of encouragement too, Tommy. But you're right. I mean, th that's more than anything is to just come out because he's facing him for the first time tonight. I mean, first time ever, and just go over, 
what they have on him. See Young hitting 346 as a pinch hitter this year. He is 9 for 26. Seven of his nine hits have come from the left side. With a tying run on first, Lidge goes to work from the stretch. And that one's in the dirt, 1-0. Oh. And one thing, Wilson is not a base stealer. That doesn't mean, you know, an element of surprise that he doesn't take off, but he's not one of those guys you think is going to run. Go. They were up on their feet here and what they hoped was going to be a strike three call and now the fingers are crossed. Two and oh the count. Three and oh. And Drew McCutcheon is on deck. Take it all the way on that one. That's fastball at 92 tonight. You saw that one was at 92. And most of them have been 92, 93. I mentioned last weekend he was hit 95 on the gun with his fastball. Slider on the outside corner, three and two. Ryan Howard reminding him now he's going to play off at first a little bit. Well, Wilson will be off on this pitch. With two outs in the count, three and two, and again, the crowd to their feet. Hoping for another victory on this homestand. And he got him. A slider swung on and missed, and Brad Lidge battles back. He allows a home run here in the ninth inning, but pushes that aside and picks up his 18th save of the season. And the Phillies with a one-run victory tonight over the Pittsburgh Pirates. And this homestand, which has been so good for them, continues as they have won seven of the first eight games on this stand. Our Chevrolet.